Hello world, human sustainability here. Um, this is really cool that it's snowing because I wanted to talk about climate. And, you know, earlier I was like, look at this, there's no snow. Um, it was supposed to snow at like, start at like 4 p.m. or so on, something like that, according to the uh, the weather. And, and boy, let me tell you something about ice on these roads out here. Uh, really, really slick. Um, like, like normally the speeds on these back roads are, you know, 65, some people are going 70, you know, it's, it's like that. Um, and today driving out here, you know, it was like 40, sometimes 50, everybody being super careful. I saw, uh, three, I think it was three vehicles in a ditch, uh, one car and two trucks. Um, so yeah, make absolutely no mistake ice doesn't care about how many wheels you got that are turning <laughs> ice doesn't care uh but anyway a, a friend in the community one of or one of my buddies he's, he texts me he's like man you're always talking about climate and everything uh, you know what do you think and we had a conversation back and forth about about climate and i wanted to discuss that because i do talk about climate i'm concerned about climate and i talk about it a lot um what we're seeing here, uh, the, I, I keep, you know, waxing on about how mild the winter is here. This is uh, certainly affected by climate change, uh, but it is not a result of climate change. This is a natural weather pattern that happens when in the South Pacific, um, the trade winds switch and it's uh, the La Nina or the El Nino, it's La Nina I think it is, they call it, whatever it is, but the, the winds change direction and it, it pulls all the heat off the ocean uh, to the east and, and then once it gets to uh, North and South America, that, that, um, all that warm temperature splits and it goes because there's mountains there, right? There's mountains all along the Western coast of North and South America. So all of that heat goes up North and down South. And as a result, when it gets all that hot air gets around the mountains and through the mountains, you know, it gets dumped down into the basin on the other side of it, which causes increases in precipitation to the southern states and uh, increased temperatures to the northern states. Um, so that's kind of what we're, we're going through right now. Um, all of you down in the south have probably seen an uptick in rain, um, uh, not snow, obviously, because you guys are, are still pretty warm down there. Um, but that is a natural weather pattern. It's affected by climate change. It's the most powerful La Nina that we've had in, I don't know, 40 years or something like that. And, and it's, it's that powerful because the ocean has been that warm in the South Pacific. Um, the, the ocean temperatures are just that hot, um, so much hotter than they, they normally are, like by two degrees or something. It's really astonishing. Um, which is what is causing this very mild winter. Uh, I said in a previous video that this time, <clears throat> excuse me, that this time of year is usually minus 20 with four feet of snow on the ground. Um, and right now it's, it's 20s and you can see there's some snow coming down. Uh, but this probably is not going to stick because next week we're supposed to get above freezing again, which is really unusual for this area. Um, and in fact, it, it's causing some, some problems for sportsmen. Uh, there's a lot of people up north here that really enjoy, you know, their winter sports. Um, not so much skiing, but ice fishing and snowmobiling and, and stuff like that. Those kinds of things. Getting out into the, into the snow and, you know, riding their sleds around and going out on lakes and stuff. Uh, last year, at this time of year, people were actually driving their trucks out on the lake because the ice was thick enough that you could do that. Uh, this year, there's already been a couple of incidents where people have gone through the water. They've gone through the ice. Um, I've mentioned before that that is like one of my, the scariest things that, that um, I can think of is going through the ice. Not so much in a lake, but like in a river. Um, you know, ice going across running water, it just scares the hell out of me because once you go down, it's really challenging to find that hole again. Um, now in a lake, the danger is just the cold, right? You get wet and then, I mean, you can 
that's hypothermia just waiting to happen. Um, so while the, um, what I'm experiencing up here and those of you in the south that are experiencing all that, that wet weather, uh, while that is affected by climate change, that is not a result of climate change. It's just more pronounced because of climate change. Um, climate change is not this thing that, you know, you can point at a storm and say that storm is only because of climate change. Uh, the, how it, it works is it just continues to push the extremes. That's what climate change does to our weather. It pushes our extremes. So while a normal El Nino um, would probably have a foot of snow on the ground and 10 degrees warmer weather, this one for this year is no snow on the ground and 20 degrees warmer. So the, it's a swing in the, in the, um, the extent, the severe, the severity of the storms or the weather that you have, you know, it gets very warm, much warmer than normal. It stays warm longer. It gets much colder, colder than normal, stays cold uh, longer, that, that type of thing, uh, which is why um, the season up here, the winter season up here is going, going to be very mild. Um, I'm not going to be out here again until oh, about the middle of February. Um, so uh, I suspect by then that uh, even though we are gaining a lot of light now, um, you know, it's only the 30th of December, but boy, even, even after nine days of gaining light, I, I can, I can already tell, I can already tell that, uh, you know, it's staying lighter longer at night and it's getting lighter earlier in the morning. So um, March is not that far away when we do our daylight savings time thing again here in the U.S. I'm not entirely sure why we do that. Probably has something to do with some brick and mortar company wanting to make money. I mean, every, everything in America is about money. I got to have money, money, money. Everything is money. Um, so yeah, um, we're gaining a lot of light and I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to say that this is normal. This is normal weather patterns, um, but the severity of it is where it's like climate change. Holy smokes, that's the thing that's doing it. Uh, you know, as I mentioned last year, uh, you know, it was minus 20. I was out here. I, I had, you know, full base layer on. I had that big heavy coat on. I do have my shell on today, you can see, and I did put on the gloves because uh, it dropped. Um, temperature went down as soon as it started snowing it dropped maybe five or ten degrees out here uh, i checked the the thermometer in the truck it said 20. Uh, you know i'm i think that's pretty close to about right so um it's about 20 degrees out here right now so you know below freezing but not as cold as it should be um which i mean it, it is what it is that's the way it goes the way it rolls uh so yeah in any case um, the severity is what climate change is causing, not the actual weather patterns. Um, now when weather patterns start to really change and shift, uh, that is going to be caused by climate change. That is a, a direction that we're going. And when that happens, uh, you know, all hell's going to break loose and, and, you know, norm, normal, whatever normal is just won't exist at all in any way at all. Uh, any longer and that is when you know if we don't have normal weather it's very challenging to farm in that it's challenging to grow stuff know when to harvest know when you can plant I mean that's all based on weather I, you know a lot of people well no that's calendar well yeah it's calendar because if weather is stable you can use a calendar to, to predict it but when weather is unstable you can't um, so, you know, you put as a farmer or somebody that's growing anything, you put seeds in the ground and then you get a freeze, your crop is lost. Um, so, and, and that kind of stuff is happening more and more frequently. Uh, additionally, there's a water problem. You know, if it doesn't rain enough because you're in a drought, you know, you, plants need water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so another, another reason why I, I was talking about low to lands in a previous video, I've got all these lowlands, it's a forest marsh. Um, as the planet increases in temperature and water becomes uh, more and more scarce, 
that forest marsh is not going to be a forest marsh anymore. That water is going to evaporate and it's just going to become lowland and then it'll sink, it'll depress some uh, because water is holding up some of the, of the the stuff down in there, all the the, the forest goodness that's laying in, in the, all those depressions and whatnot. Uh, but that's going to be very, very fertile land um, uh, in terms of agriculture until it floods again, right? But I mean, it, it, is, it is essentially a floodplain. Uh, I don't intend to do traditional farming. I intend to do uh, kind of forest farming, which is, you know, I'll plant perennials and let them, let them grow wild and harvest as I want. And then for those specific things, herbs and spices and and vegetables, specific vegetables and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do that in a, in a, a climate controlled environment, you know, greenhouse essentially with a, I've, I've spoken about aquaponics before. Um, really kind of looking forward to doing that. I've been, I've been noodling on that, um, how I'm going to get that set up um, when I, when I get over there. It's all about thought experiments. I've still got a lot of work to do in here just to get this stuff harvested and, and pro well, it's harvested. I need to process all this, all this building material that's in here. Uh, and I am looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I look at this and I just see a lot of sore muscles. <laughs> I look at all this wood and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be just exhaust. You know, I'm going to be sweating all the time. I'm going to be sore all the time. Uh, just so that I can get this stuff processed and, and then you know I've got to cut beams and and joists and stuff and then uh, you know I can use the plank on top of that um, in order to, to get the base camp set right I mean that's just to get to the point where I can start worrying about doing the work on the boardwalk uh, over there uh, which I'm going to need a bunch of building material to do that as well but uh, yeah, I, I'll get to that when I get to that and explain to you uh, what I'm thinking about for that in terms of, of you know, dimensions and the architecture that I'm going to put together to, to get that in place. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited. I, I hope that I can at least get started on that next season. It'll be late next season. Um, got a lot of work to do between now and then, uh, including not not just the processing of all of this wood but i also want to be um, um in a position to to actually get some firewood stacked up uh, i've talked about it earlier um, in previous videos about all the firewood that's back in these woods um and i you know i want to i want to start breaking the, those trails down and you know cutting out some of these branches so that a stupid human can walk around back in there and and harvest this stuff that's back in there it's just laying on the ground if I get out here, harvest it, get it uh, split up and stacked up, you know, and start getting a, getting some some more firewood around. Um, and obviously, I've got a whole bunch of brush that I'm going to have to to burn. So, you know, I will be burning some wood. Uh, obviously, as I have my little campfires, I mean, that's part of my recreation when I'm out here. Uh, and I I did look at this earlier. Uh, part of my recreation out here is going to be, uh, uh, you know, the campfire. I like, I like the campfire at night. Um, but I was looking at this over here, and I did get the tent. I ordered it, and it came in. Um, so from that tree to this tree, uh, right in here, and I'll, like I said, I'll take these branches and stuff out. Um, but, I mean, this is going to be my view when I'm, when I'm with campfire right here, uh, while I'm building that thing over there, uh, this will be my view. And I was thinking if that tent does work out uh, really well, I can have my base camp here. So, you know, blah, blah. But if I'm across in the, in the, the promised land doing work, I mean, I could put that tent up there too and, and sleep up on the land up there. I <laughs> mean, why not? It's like camping while I'm camping. <laughs> uh, but but yeah really what it means is if I've got that up there it's an enclosed shelter that I can keep equipment in I can keep gear in that that sort of thing um, that is up where I'll be working which will be up in the promised land uh, until I get you know stuff in and I hear a chainsaw somebody's out there 
uh, with their chainsaw now. So must be logged down across the road somewhere. Anyway, uh, difference between climate and weather and why climate change is important and a little bit of fun. I got to have some fun, right? I mean, all the recreation out here has to be found because it, it doesn't, you know, you can't put a dollar in a machine and get some recreation out here. You got to build your own. So, yeah, it looks, uh, it looks the way I expected it to look and uh, we'll see what it looks like in about a month. Like, comment, subscribe and eat more fruit.